Hello? We need to talk. 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 Welcome back to the talk episode number 102. I'm Rose KOA alongside Tobler. <sighs> Took a little bit of a break, guys. Um, almost a couple of weeks now. My body's been out of whack. Um, burnout is a real thing. Burnout is a very real thing. Uh, and not just burnout, just like just bodily exhaustion as well. It might not always be burnout. Um, but, um, I was at a state where I just physically couldn't function. I couldn't, I text, I texted the morning, the morning I was supposed to shoot. And I was just like, yo, I can't even, I can't even move. <laughs> like it was, yeah, it was very, um, don't come in. I was like, we're not working. Yeah. Like it's not even, it wasn't even sick. Like I'm not, I'm not sick. Um, I, I checked myself into the hospital, did all the tests, all my blood work, COVID tests, all that stuff was fine. It was just, just your body, your body talks to you when it, when it's ready and, and it's not. Um, always the best time. There's never the best time. It's always you always have things you could be doing or should be doing or want to be doing. But when you have to stop, you have to stop. So um, I'm still you know 75 percent of myself, but it definitely made me slow down. Um, again, <laughs> I've already slowed down since COVID, but um, it definitely slowed me down again and made me kind of you know recalibrate and just determine what's important the things that matter like when you when you can't move when you can't walk get up like nothing matters bro like fucking video games traveling girls boys like you can't move doesn't add, nothing matters all you want to do is be healthy yeah. you know so it's yeah. like it always brings me back to those moments like you ever see movies i'm sure you see movies where like there's millionaires billionaires and they're sick and they're just like, well, what's the point? Yeah, like, like it doesn't matter what kind of success you have if you're not if your body is just not wh- in good shape. Who cares? Not much else you can. If you're do. a billionaire, bro. You have you could you could be anywhere in the planet right now. Yeah, but you can't leave your bed. What what is What's the point? What does it mean to have a billion dollars? Like, <laughs> you know, it's just it, it really it puts life in perspective. Um, I mean, I'd still want a billion dollars, <laughs> but yeah. at the same time, it's like, what's money if you can't use it, if you can't, uh, you know, experience it, what's, what's accolades, what's, you know, success, all this stuff is like, if you can't enjoy it with people you love and care about. So, um, yeah, just, I've been taking time off to just, you know, rest because it's something I definitely have a difficult time doing. Um, and just you know, we're in an, an, another lockdown verse, version 95.6. <laughs> and like at this point, I think we're all just kind of tired. Um, I feel like the morale in the city is very low right now mm-hmm. from what I'm just like watching people. Like it just, I just feel like every, everything is just very stagnant. We're all on a cycle of yeah. some sort, whether you work for yourself or not, it still feels like we're on some loop. Um, and I, I think mental health right now is a really, really important issue to address for everybody. Um, just this isn't normal. Like th- this is not a. I'm I'm turning thirty one this year. You're twenty nine, and you've never had a life like this. This, this isn't normal, and for for anybody like this. Yeah, and it's so strange. Like, like you know. Um, you could go down the whole conspiracy theory route, like why we're even still doing this compared to other countries, like what kind of yeah. changes are our government trying to make in the back end? But you're right. None of it's normal. We're not supposed to be locked down living for, like this, living like this for more than a year. And it's crazy, you know, because, you know, even though we are, you and I specifically are technically marginalized people, like, we're minorities, you know, we have it better than a lot of other people, right? And even still knowing that, I say to myself, this year makes no sense. Like, it actually makes no sense. I was hanging out with two of my friends yesterday, and we were just, we were talking about this and how I've become, like, really tight with these two people in the past year. And we were just like, yo, I've... I've never, we've never gone out to a bar and with them specific, yeah, specifically. Like we've never gone to a bar and just got drunk. 
like those things haven't happened. Like there are things that would typically happen that have never happened. And you're just like, Oh, this is actually the new normal. So, and it's like, it's hard to actually see a world right now for us here in Canada, specifically Ontario, where we go back to that normal because our government is so stupid. Like (laughs) that's honestly, yeah, they're so dumb in terms of how they're handling everything that I actually can't see going back to how things used to be. I mean, I, I doubt we're ever, we'll ever go back to that. I think, I mean, it's all speculation. I don't know shit. I don't know anything, but when you see places like Atlanta, Texas, Miami, LA in some places, um, Florida, Florida. I mean, all I just, of all I, of Florida. I just watched the UFC event. Like they, it was packed house. All of Florida, pretty much. Yeah. Not not just Miami. All of Florida. <laughs> but when you when you see stuff like that in other places of the world, it almost makes you feel like we're in an alternate universe of some sort. Yeah, it's like we're not. Everyone's cl- clearly not on the same page. Um. This is called a global pandemic, mm. but we're not operating globally whatsoever. Not at so, all. Not even close. <laughs> so it's like when you see stuff like that, you see people partying, not even just partying, but just you see people just living. Um, I, I think it was Texas that had the first full stadium of, of people. Yeah. So they had and like, so they had a baseball game outside and then in Jacksonville, they just had the first in the, in North America, they have the first indoor right. sporting event, full, full packs, and it was it was like Dana White. He just said, "Listen, like Florida had like done their own shit, yeah." But he just said, "Listen, um, if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you, if you don't, you don't." And he's like, the entire week, he's like, no one was talking shit at other people. It was just like, just live, just live. Like, wear your mask if you want to wear your mask. Whether it makes you, you comfortable, whether it makes you comfortable. And I mean, I'm no doctor. I don't know shit. I just, I just know this is not a sustainable method. What we're doing right now. It's not at all. Um, and there's, it just, it, it really, I think, I think it's straining me the most is, is the traveling aspect of it. Um, I think if everything was whatever it is right now, if everything was just whatever it is right now, but I could travel freely without this nonsense. I think I'd be okay. Cause there's a lot of projects that, you know, I want to do there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people that I'm supposed to be seeing or should be seeing, or I would be seeing during this time. There's a lot of things I would be going or place I'd be doing um, work wise and, and leisure wise that I think would overall bring a, a greater peace of mind for myself. But I think having that removed on top of, Locally stuff, things are removed on top of just compound and compound and compound. And then obviously you have this life of fucking prejudice and killing and all this stuff on top of all of that. Like it's just One floating around in the background. It's like, oh yeah, we also die mm. from time to time. Yeah. Yes, by the way. Like here and there, we're going to also die yeah. from stupid stuff. Yeah. Just because you're black. Like that's just, just get over that part. Don't worry. Like if you think about that on top of everything, you're just going to implode. Yeah, no, <laughs> you just crazy. have to kind of like turn it off so you're literally gonna go insane i think if i think if the traveling at some point could what w- does it alle- alleviate um and allows people to you know n- whatever just move around i mean i i get it it's we're trying to come you know um keep it in and whatever tactics they believe but we need to find a better solution Oh, um, you actually had your vaccine. What is your experience with that? I, I don't have mine. I, I don't. So, you know, I, I was able to get my vaccine. Um, is there a particular one that you got? I got Pfizer. Why? Cause it, I, did, I, I didn't even think about choose? it. Do you get to choose? No, you don't get to choose. It it's depends where you go. It depends where, where you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I went to Sunnybrook hospital and they were giving me the Pfizer vaccine. I was like, cool. Like, um, it's funny because when you ask, like, did you choose the way our system is set up right now? It almost feels like it's easier to get a pair of Jordans than it is to get your vaccine. <laughs> like, if you actually wanted to get your vaccine, it's so it's like so difficult just to like get. If it. you're like 
you mean just like I want it? Yeah. If I say to if someone says tomorrow I want to get this vaccine, it's difficult to get it because mm. there's so many like hoops and places you have to go and appointments and all this shit. And you know, I managed to get mine. And then so I got mine back in March. Might have been March 27th. You got your first dose. First dose, right? And, you know, I hear, here I am thinking, okay, I'll probably get the second dose within a month. And they say, you're going to get your second dose July 21st, right? April, May, June. Yeah, I remember July 21st because I was like, four months. Like, I'm thinking when she gave me the form, she's like, here's your vaccine slip. Uh, and yeah, here's a date for the second one. And I was like, sick, cool. And I left. And then when I'm driving home, I'm like, wow, I really got to wait four months for this. Like, this is crazy. And it's because what they've been trying to do is make sure they get as many people who want the vaccine. They want to get as many people their first, the first dose first. Right? At least. At least. Um, which, you know, in hindsight, it's not a bad plan. The problem is our government has been really poor at procuring vaccines and distributing them right like you know last year we were all shitting on america based on how they were handling stuff like the rising case like the case numbers were insane you know and for us we can talk about the fact that all right our death toll you know any death is bad but it's like our death toll is not massive compared to some other countries per capita yeah per (laughs) cap compared to other countries is not not as huge but now the issue is all these other countries, specifically the states, have been able to vaccinate, I think, something like at least 60 percent of the country right? who, who want it. Like who, whoever wants it, 60 percent of those people have got it. And meanwhile, we're I'm willing to bet we're not even at 20 percent of the country. Of Canada? Yeah, definitely. Of Canada. Not. Definitely not. And we have like. Just looking at California, California has the same population as Canada. I think a bit more actually. And the majority of their population is vaccinated and we're not even close. And majority of our stuff are in Ontario. Yeah. And we're not even close. Right. So it's like, all right, sick. Like it, it, there's this notion going around that like people are, there's like more people are hesitant to take the vaccine. And it's not true. Cause like every day you see, you see videos of people in like these racialized communities, like lining up, like they're lining up. Are the United States or here? Here. Okay. There's people lining up to get the vaccine. And if you didn't know what it is that they were lining up for, you'd think it's for like a shoe raffle. Like a, uh, <laughs> or a t- I swear to God, it's like, yeah. it's like hundreds of people lining up. Like people want to get the vaccine. They just don't have access to it. And then I'm talking to my mom, you know, cause my mom works at Canada post. And she said, she's like, yo, when you see these reports about case numbers, she's like, those case numbers are, they, the majority of them are coming from Canada Post, Amazon, all these places. Workers? Workers. And, you know, she's talked about how, like, like, you know, different types of people that work at these warehouses. And then, you know, they had shut down Amazon for a bit. Because they had like crazy case numbers. But she's like, a lot of the people who work at Amazon also work at Canada Post. So it's like, cool, you shut shut down Amazon for like a they week just or move two. Over. They just go work at Canada Post. And my mom's like, I'm she's like, my mom's like, I don't know how I haven't caught COVID yet working in these places. And it's our whole system is just backwards, right? So they were doing an age system where like if you're over the age of 60, you can go get the vaccine. I have my own gripes with it because it's like, cool, I understand we want to protect the most vulnerable. We want to protect the elderly. They're not contributing to the economy. I'm sorry. Like they're not. If we just, if we're being brutal, that's what it is. When I went to go get my vaccine, there was nothing but old people there. Right. And I'm like, good, cool. I'm glad you're getting the vaccine, Gertrude. I'm happy for you. But what the fuck are you like? It's easier for, it's easier for me to control your situation yeah yeah. if i need you to stay home make sure you you get taken care of that's very doable right it would make more sense to vaccinate 
the people, the people who are, running around the city, <laughs> people running around the city, the yeah. people who are taking care of the elderly. Mm-hmm. Like, why are we vaccinating the older people before the people, the younger people who are taking care of them, who have multiple jobs in droves, who can't like who can't afford to not work. Right. Right. Because they don't have paid sick leave. The government right. literally last year said two years ago said we think paid sick leave would be a waste of taxpayer money. And now we're seeing where that's what they literally said. And you Google it. And like, that's where we're at now. So our whole system is backwards. So I, I bring that up to say this. My mom works at Canada Post. She's older than 60, right? They, she had to wait to get her vaccine because they started off like over 80, then over 70. She gets her vaccine, the first dose, right? But she has to wait X amount of months to get the second dose, whatever. How does it make sense that you know that these places are hot spots for COVID? By this point, it's general knowledge. Everyone knows if you work in a warehouse, Chance of you getting COVID are like crazy high. She gets her first dosage. Most of the people that work at warehouses are what? They're young. They're people who does part-time jobs. They're young. Yeah, yeah. So how does it make sense that you could have older people work in a warehouse that can get the vaccine, but then you have all these young people work in the warehouse that aren't eligible to get the vaccine yet? literally not eligible they're not eligible because they're not of oh, age of the age bracket. not of that oh. age they never said it's never been it's not, hey, it's not by career it's thank you it's, it's the, the only time it's ever been by career is if you work in healthcare right, anything right. like that right yeah. that's how i was able to get it but right. it's like okay what about people who work in like you say non-essential bit like these are essential businesses but they're not saying that if you work at a warehouse go get the fucking you can get the vaccine do just due to your career so it's counterproductive, yeah, you know, yeah. like it makes no sense me getting where, a vaccine where you still like, yeah. have to work around people who can pass it on to me. Like it's, I mean, but at this point, man, we, we all, <laughs> at this point, how much, how much has made sense? Like we can, we can keep saying doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. But we, <laughs> how much has made sense in terms of <laughs> decision-making at any level? So it's like, it's almost at the point where it's like, we know it's not going to make sense. We have to get to where we're like, if this is the system we're in, we just have to shake our head a trillion times if we have to. Uh. But <laughs> I, I didn't even watch the interview, but there, I, I heard there was something about Doug Ford crying on TV. Like I have, I didn't even watch it. No, like, I have no sympathy for Doug Ford at did all. Did you watch it? What I is did. he crying about? I have no sympathy. He's crying. He's being a bitch. He's trying to <laughs> basically come across like these are hard, like hard times for him and blah, blah blah blah. And I'm like, listen, for his decision making. Yeah, like here's the thing, right? I literally do not envy anyone in politics at all. Like for the last two years, for the last, any, in any period, time, in period, time, I never yeah. envied them. But like, especially in the time of a pandemic like this, a global pandemic, I don't envy you because you have to make decisions that a lot of people aren't going to like, right? On either end. On either end. It's always going to be like this. This guy's clearly catering to his base slow. It's that much is clear, but it's tough being a politician. My issue, and the reason I have no sympathy for him is because these people who get into politics, they're they're not like us. Like they never came, they never came from the from mud. Ground level. Yeah, they never, they never came from the mud. They never came from ground level. So they usually come from a place of privilege. And being a politician or working in politics is a very thankless job. But a lot of them get into it because they want to be thanked all the time. They want that praise. They want people to feel like, oh, I did this. Like I, but like when you're in politics, it's a thankless job. Like you do shit every single day that the general public doesn't know or doesn't give a fuck They'll about. They'll never know what happened, but They'll you have never to do know, it. Right. But they just expect that you're taking care of them. And in this case, this guy's getting all upset because of how we're at and the decisions he's made and why things aren't getting better. And I have, a, I have like a really strong aversion. <laughs> like it's almost like a, a physical aversion to people who make consistently dumb decisions that, that that fully know they're in a position to seek help from people that know better. Like if I don't mind, if I don't, I'm at a point now in my career where 
I've moved. I've moved out of doing photography as much as I used to, right? If someone were to ask me to do some photography stuff, like high level photography stuff that I know that I cannot handle, the first thing I'm going to do is be like, let me call Ryan. (laughs) <laughs> like, let me call Pat. Like, I'm, I'm gonna go to people who are the experts in this field. You get what I'm saying? I just force it. I'm not gonna force <laughs> it because if I force it, what's gonna happen? It's gonna be terrible. What do you mean? Nothing that's terrible. It won't be terrible. It won't. In, like, our ca- in my case, yeah, it, it won't, be, won't terrible, be, ter- be terrible. It's not terrible, but it's like it could to, be to knowingly, <laughs> to knowingly be aware that there's resources, and fight it for your pride. Is doesn't benefit any of your client or the people, the public. It's insane. Or yourself. It's insane. Like it's literal insanity. And that's what he's doing. And if it collapses, now what do you say? (laughs) You start crying on camera. That's what you do. Like there are there are actual people who know better than this guy. Right? Like for for the longest time, we kept we're like the doctors don't know what they're doing. Like the scientists don't know what they're saying, blah, blah, blah. Like there's always conflicting things, but now it's like, everyone is in agreement. <laughs> they're like, listen, we need paid sick leaves. We need, that's what we need. Number one, right? We know where the hot spots are. We have are. the data at this point. We've been <laughs> at the data. It's almost, the, almost going into our, we're in our second year, going to go complete our second year soon. This is no, this is no longer like the first year, the first few months we can say, was pure guesswork winging it no one has experienced this before <laughs> winging it they fucking said they wasn't even gonna make it to canada yada 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 right yeah then when it hit and it came in in waves people getting sick here dropping off dropping off we were in panic mode literally mm. panic mode <laughs> pandemic right yeah for which real. i get that first yeah. couple months don't know what's going on don't know what this is yeah what is this virus whoa, whoa, whoa. right cool Five months in, half a year in, yeah, a, a full three sixty five days in, <laughs> yeah, a full at this, year. At this point, this you have the people that under that are, you have the people that have been watching this literally go through a hospital mm. from <laughs> insertion to exit, mm. from contraction to death. We're, we we literally have data to witness. How this is this starting? Where it's coming from? How it's ending? Mm. Where are the hot spots? Where are the low spots? Who's losing? Who's winning? How many businesses are affected? How many yeah. businesses have closed? You can literally look at a piece of fucking paper between 2019 yeah. and 2021 and be like, what has happened? Yeah. You, we had stuff to look at paper and be like, what has happened last couple of years? So you, you cannot tell me at this point that you don't know you don't know any better. You don't know. Remember when you said a few what? weeks ago, like, I refuse to accept anyone saying, I don't know. No. Like, at this age, you can't say, if I ask you a question about something like personal or something like this, and you say, I don't know. I'm not taking it. I'm not taking that answer. It's not acceptable at this point. I don't know what we're doing, folks. I don't know why we're in this position. What do you mean you don't know? How is it? That I know and you don't know. We're all watching the same movie How is here. that I'm a regular dude living in this and I know why we're in this position and you don't? We're all watching the same movie here. We're literally all watching the same movie. And we have the, all, we have the script in front the of us. The same resources. We have the script. Like we're watching. I just this. don't have the power to do certain things and you do. There's the only difference. So like. <laughs> I, I, w- <laughs> I was in. <laughs> Like I was in Walmart because mm. I want to buy bedding. Yeah, <laughs> you couldn't buy it. <laughs> you couldn't buy it because it's not an essential item. I want to buy a sheet. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's taped off. And I'm like, I actually need sheets. Yeah, I need <laughs> I need new sheets mm. for my bed. Yeah, and a maybe a pillow. Mm. No, all of it off so i i asked the worker i said oh is this can i not buy bedding mm-hmm. right now he's like yeah it's it's not uh, do the government it's not essential i right know now. you now you got these poor and retail employees trying to explain this and they, and they know it's dumb they of they, course they, he kn- they know it's ridiculous of course and they he, can't do he looked at it. me he's like yeah uh the government has these stipulations that we we can't sell it to you 
I'm like, what if I need bedding? He's like, well, you can order it. I'm like, what? And you see how that you see, <laughs> you see how that actually puts another strain on the system. Okay, so you can't buy it in store. So now the people who work at these warehouses, they gotta ship it. <laughs> like, what I, are we doing here? Like, what I, are we actually doing? I looked at him, and he looked at me like, I know. I'm like, so I can't leave the physical store with it right now. No, but you can go online, order it. They'll ship it to you. What? <laughs> no, but do you see how dumb we look to the rest of the world? You know how stupid we look. You can't sell to me right now because the government says it's no longer essential mm. for you to sell to me. Yeah, in person. Yes, but if I go home right now and order from Walmart, mm. it will show up <laughs> from your warehouse, and it'll show up days <laughs> later when I didn't like I wanted it that day. But is it not still no longer essential? Even if I fucking want to order it. Like. This. What is happening here? You know, what's crazy. You know, what's crazy, right? I like, I agree with everything you're saying. As you were saying all that. I literally had an outer body experience <laughs> right now. God. Like I literally had an outer body <laughs> experience. And I just thinking about this conversation and I'm like. It makes no sense. <laughs> like what these guys are talking about makes no sense. There's zero consistency in anything that they're no, saying. No, like I, we all know that <laughs> it actually makes no sense. But it actually makes. But like when you really <laughs> sit there and you verbally say out loud, I like, can't I'm, leave with this bag. Imagine going to another country, right, and explaining to someone. They're like, "Hey, look. Hey, I want to buy this laptop. Right, I want to buy this laptop. You walk into the store and you say, "I want to buy this laptop." I'm holding it right now in my hand. It's can, here. Can I buy this? No. Sorry, sir. It's not essential. You, you can't buy this right now. But you can, you can go online, order it, and then we'll ship it to you. <laughs> they look you in the face. Or you can go online, you can order it, and you can do curbside pickup. He told me that. <laughs> I almost want to swing. <laughs> I was like, I almost, I, so you're like, I hold almost, on. I, I, I'm holding no. it right now. I can't leave the store with this. I have it in my hand. It's here. I can't leave with it. No, sir. You can order it online. We can ship it to you, or you can do curbs. Okay, so if I order it right now, can I in your get, face? Can I order if I order it right now in your face? Can I pick it up curbside in the next twenty minutes? No, sir. You have to pick it up the next business day because our people will have to move the inventory in order for you to get it the next day. I actually like, what you have to look at. The f- <laughs> what are you talking about? Are we idiots? Are we idiots? They think we're dickheads. No, but That's we ha- what it is. Like, <laughs> I got dickhead right on my forehead. The thing, is, the thing is, we're doing it. What's worse? We're doing it. <laughs> like, I think it's going to get to a point. Truthfully, I think it's really going to get to a point where people are actually going to stop, stop listening. You know, and it's, they have to. And you know what it is? Like the other dude, the other day, I'm, I'm at Queen and Spadina, right? Like right across from the gym. There's an anti-masker rally going on. I didn't talk about this in my story. I wanted to talk about this. There's an anti-masker rally going on, right? They're going down Queen, and then they turn down Spadina. You know where that rowdy McDonald's is? Yeah. They're turning down, and they're going towards Front Street. And, of course, the crowd is exactly how you'd imagine. A bunch of, like, rowdy white people. And, like, there's, like, a few... Shutting down traffic? Yeah, but everything's moving. And there's a few minorities in there. It's in, Everyone's just weird, right? Saying a whole bunch of shit. And I can't cross the street because these people are going mm. across. So I'm just chilling, waiting for them to do, do the thing and pass by. And I shit you not, Ryan. This woman, she might have been, she was definitely, I don't know what she was, but she, they're all yelling at people on the side of the street. They're like, we're doing this for you. Like the government's locking us down, blah, blah, blah. We're doing this for you. I've never been more embarrassed in my life at what she did. She fucking <laughs> sees me in the crowd, right? Like waiting. I'm just there waiting across the street. Black like, baby? No, it wasn't a black lady. Okay. But she was clearly like mixed. Like she was white and something else. I'm standing at the sidewalk with my headphones in. So I'm like not paying attention to what she's saying. And she like points at me. 
So I like take my headphones. Is your mask on? Yeah, my mask was on. I take my <laughs> headphones out. And she's like, say, like, listen, brother, we're doing this for you too. The government's trying to kill black people. They're trying to kill us by telling us to wear masks. It's the same thing. We're doing it for you. And like my I have my mask up, but my jaw dropped. Cause I'm like, there's no way you're trying to equate the two, right? And there's no way you're yelling this across the street at me. Across the street at me. (laughs) Singled out. Singled out in front of all these people. (laughs) Like, I was supposed to agree to this. I've never been so embarrassed, bro. Like, I just put my headphones back in and I had to stand there. I had to stand there and wait for them to go down the street. So now it's at a point where every every day I'm increasingly like, okay, I understand. I, I, I understand aspects the whole anti-masker thing. I don't, I don't agree with like, fuck the mask, blah, blah, blah. I don't agree with that. What I, what do you understand? What I do understand is when they say shutting down small businesses and doing all this shit is not productive. Like, cause right. it's not like, and even you don't need to be part of that camp to believe any of that. Sure. Right. Yeah. But I'm just saying that I think it's going to get to a point where people are just going to say no. Right. And I think they're going to say no in a more respectful way than the way that these anti-maskers are going about it, where people are going to say, no, we're going to open our businesses and we're going to have safety protocols in place. Right. We're not going to ram up our places. We're going to do this because people need to. We're not just we're not just stopping indefinitely. We can't like and Andrew Schultz said it the other day. Right. Like on his uh, on his pocket, he talks specifically about Toronto. Lou talks about Ontario and he's like. He's like, dude, they only, he's like, they have, he's joking. He's like, they have summer for like one month of the year. And then he joked. He's like, no, for real, they have summer for like four months, maybe out of the year. And they just went into another lockdown. He's like, they can't go into lock. They cannot afford to go through summer with a lockdown. It'd be only four months that they have. Because (laughs) he's like, I guarantee, and I believe this, I guarantee you, you're going to see more like cases of mental health shit on the other end of this. And yeah, I said, you can't take away summer too from the, the limited summer that the country and has. Is, and this is a problem that the government doesn't want to talk about. Like right. They're not, they don't want to focus on that issue right now. Mm-hmm. And it's upsetting because everything that's happened is made, is made people divisive amongst each other and like yeah. argue amongst For each the other. the wrong reasons. Yeah. Rather than like saying, yo, our, our government is not doing what it needs it's to be It's not me done. versus you. Dude, I had I was having a conversation the other day with this this girl I used to work with. She's a nurse now, right? Works at the hospital. So she's seeing this shit firsthand, right? And I know a few people in my life that have caught COVID. Some of them has been really bad, but I haven't known anyone that's died from it yet. And, you know, she works in the hospital. She's seen people die from this shit. And worse, she's now seeing younger people coming in, like severely affected by this. And when I was having a conversation with her, she was leaning more towards like her language and the way she was speaking to me. It was like, yeah, like this is the public's fault that we're in this position. Right. And I'm thinking. I'm like, what? Like it's it's a combination of two things. Like, yeah, you have people who are just completely reckless. But then you also have the government like not managing the situation properly, but they've like you're you're in so deep at this point oh, all, she, all she's seeing is, all you, is all, human yeah all she's seeing is the public side of right. it and i'm like how do you not i'm like you you probably you're probably working like six seven days a week she's like i feel bad when i don't take a shift right i'm like you shouldn't have to like it's not it's not healthy it's not healthy it's for like, you right and I'm, I'm trying to talk to her about the fact that i know that people's mental health is not good right now right and she's talking about like there are resources and i'm like no you don't understand like it's not it's not a fucking band-aid it's not a band like, <laughs> you don't understand like it's because you're on one spectrum yeah, of it yeah. and i'm on another and it's hard for people to come in between and it's like you can you see the play we see the play like we know why this is happening and this is not gonna get fixed so i don't know i think i think people are gonna say no at a certain point i just don't know when you know there, yeah, there, people are definitely going to say, I mean, they're already saying no. I I think my toughest thing, like we'll, we'll wrap up, wrap this part, but 
I think my toughest, toughest thing, like grasping all of this is like, I'm, I'm not an idiot. Like, I, I think I'm just too, I'm so rational that like when I'm, it actually frustrates me when I actually pay attention. Cause I'm like, you know that like, you know, this doesn't make any logical sense. So it's like, know. but it's like, but I can't do anything about it. Like it's, it, it, I think that's the most frustrating thing. It's like, I know right now, I know right now I've seen it. <laughs> Mans are flying out, in and out of this fucking country. Yeah. Partying in all the other places, whatever. Come back home. Quarantine. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Whatever the fuck they do when they come back. Yeah. And then are bringing shit back into the city. Right? Yeah. I know people are driving through the border, coming back, bringing whatever to the city. Wow. That's and crazy. I know people are fucking... Wearing a mask, not wearing a mask, yeah. whatever. I don't. I'm not really big on the mask thing. I don't like. I personally wear it just because you know wearing it. I'd rather wear it than not wear it. But yeah. at the same time, it's like <laughs> we we all need groceries. We all need certain things, yep. and these places are packed with people. Rammed, 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 rammed. So <laughs> just logically, it's like. I- Yes, I know we all need food to eat as humans, mm. but our grocery stores are packed with humans mm. from all different walks of life that probably have COVID fucking in and out of the touching vegetable. Fuck it. It's in there. It's, <laughs> it's in, there. in the grocery stores. Absolutely it is. But then it's like it absolutely you're is. shutting down a fucking personal studio that has a maximum capacity of 12 people a day. Yeah. And they're just indefinitely closed. Like for, like for what? No, like, but I'm just, I'm, I, know, I know what you're saying. The lo- like, I'm just trying, like when you, like <laughs> there has to be people at the table. <laughs> like I just can't, I, I can't conceptualize. There aren't real humans at government official tables sitting here asking these questions. I, I can't, <laughs> like, I, I can't, oh my I, can't God, ex- bro. I can't accept that there's a full table of government officials and no one's like, there's actually more people in grocery stores than in uh, the gyms. No one's, no one said that. No one. And if they did, they just went, we know. I think they, I think someone said it and they're like, shut up, Ron, <laughs> go back to work. <laughs> like what? Like, I feel like it's, I don't care. I feel like it's almost, it's almost like the way police view civilians mm. is how government is viewing human. And what I mean by that yeah. is like p- the police force has their perspectives yeah. and their narratives that people may not agree with in the police force, but they're kind of just like, it's just how we do things here. Yeah. Like I know people that have got police jobs and they're like, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I expected it to be. Mm. But sign up for. But once you're there, like with, you're a cop now. Yeah, you're there, you're there. But there's things within the police force that they're just like, this is just what we do as police. Mm. And people are kind of like, it's a little weird. Yeah. But it's just the way things are done here. Yeah. I feel like that same mentality is in the government where it's like, there's no way everyone in the government's stupid. Mm. And there's, there's definitely black people in the government, definitely white people, all different races in the government. But there are definitely smart people in the government that are like, sir, this doesn't add up. And majority rule in the government are probably like, we know, but we just gotta do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like this doesn't. Yeah, like they're like this doesn't make any sense. But they, I, I know they know. Hmm. I think that's what's. <laughs> I think that's what's like driving me. Like you, I know you know you don't. You you actually want us to believe it makes sense when you know it doesn't. It's the form of manipulation that's like, it's so much deeper than just like conspiracy. It's literally like, I need you. I need the public to believe this works. Mm. We just need it. <laughs> I know it doesn't make sense, but I need you guys to get on board. 
Like, and and they're literally pushing it until we do. Like, I think we just have to pretend like we're on board at some point to try and flip the script somehow. Because I think the more we fight it, it's just slowing this down. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. We're we're all fucking tired of this COVID business. Like you that's said. your business. Yeah, we know exactly why this shit's happening. We have the script. We're all watching the same movie. We're about to watch season two, and it's like, all right, all right, guys, it's gonna get a lot worse before it gets any better. And it's like, I doesn't it doesn't need to be this way. That's the thing. It actually doesn't. And that's the most frustrating part. Now we're helpless. <laughs> Let's get to these fucking questions. Let's get to this, uh, the answers, I suppose. Okay, so uh, we had asked the question. Well, it relates with the constant restrictions and unpredictable timelines for normalcy. What steps have you taken to re- remain inspired and positive? Got a lot of responses to this one. Man. A lot of good ones. Nicole, she said. Um, as most people, I'm sure I've been trying not to be on my phone as much and avoiding watching the news all the time. Instead, I've been reading, going for walks, hikes when I can and rewatching shows and movies that give me nostalgia. I also go for walks around my elementary school and my high school and reminisce about all of the memories that definitely helped take my mind off of what's going on in the world and brought me back to my teenage years. <laughs> Sounds like a fairy tale. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad that's Words. working for you. Damn. But that's said, said she said. This is gonna sound weird, but literally praying or tapping more into my spirituality. There's a calming sense of just talking to God or meditating. Also, if I feel I'm in a mood or anxious, and I learned this from my therapist, I would put a timer for five minutes. You said to start small and something that I enjoy or makes me happy. Should I say? Allison, lol, watching the states and other parts of the world living their lives. But honestly, watching people, ideas, projects from other places keeps me inspired. Talking those ideas, taking those ideas and building my own. Ambitious. You said living vicariously through everyone else who's living. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Ravel. She said, focusing on making my house a home, making space for my hobbies, especially ones that require focus and time. Examples, gaming and crochet. Keeping up with friends through various means. No excuses not to anymore. Mm. YYZ radio. They said innovating (laughs) one word, Annie spending less time on my phone, cooking something new every week, reading more fiction, journaling every day, working out outside, learning languages, sticking to a routine. Okay. Good on you. Nicole maintaining virtual hangouts with my friends. I've had since elementary high and high school and my old uni roommates going for as many walks as possible with my dog. Some days it's really hard to stay positive. I also have been cutting myself off from too much COVID related news. You know, what's crazy. Like you have a friend that you know is in very deep with the COVID shit. Like that all they do <laughs> with the COVID, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sound old now <laughs> with the COVID shit, with the COVID, with the COVID, but you know what um, I mean? Man, eh? Like just, just always digging, just digging, <sighs> just digging, just digging every day, digging. I have a friend and I know she knows <laughs> who she is. Like is she just posting all the time. Just I, always just kind of, but she's just so she's in so deep with it. And I have to tell, I'm like, this can't be good for you. Yeah. Stop no, it. It's not. It's a COVID, uh, COVID porn. <laughs> it's basically trauma porn. It is. That's what it is. It is. That's exactly what it is. Feed it. Feed me more. CWP, the amazing power of creating your reality, taking control of what's in your control and how you re- react to every external aspect is a big key. Things are what they are, what they've always been. Circumstances out of your control on steroids now. So it's time for a superhuman to come out. Ramon. Invested in my physical health as much as possible. Good. Uh, Shay. She said, doing the same things I was doing before lockdown. Still chilling with my close friends. Still going outside for workouts. Still working on my business. She's like, ain't ain't shit changed, baby. (laughs) Shanika. Talking. I was never really one who does constant communication. But I found that in these times, they've become comforting. Even if it's just sending memes every day so we can laugh together. It's nice knowing that they're thinking of me as much as I think of them. I text more. I call to check in a video call and I used to hate video calling. I've, I started, I like FaceTiming way more now. 
than normal times. Yeah, like I've not, I've never really been a like own kind of person. I don't mind it. Like now you kind of, but I definitely prefer. The, I would prefer to do facial FaceTime. interaction. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ray, reading lots of paranormal books, making videos, and taking pictures. Anything that keeps my mind off the news. Paranormal Ellis, books. Yeah, paranormal books specifically. Yeah. Ellis de Menace. Honestly, the fact that I'm going back to school has been keeping me busy. Also, learning about making mini habits is becoming very useful. I hope you cut back on your porn, bro. <laughs> he was the one I was talking about before, You're right? Idiot. <laughs> Reckless. <laughs> Remaining in contact with people I care about. Gathering perspectives so I'm not always stuck in my own head with my own thoughts. Uh, Naya, she said, sign back up for school, starting daily affirmations and working on creating good daily habits. Uh, Victoria, finally investing in a life slash developmental coach. And last but not least, uh, <laughs> Chance, he says, was getting high all day. <laughs> um, those are good ones, guys. Yeah. Um, those are all better than mine. <laughs> I will be honest with you. Uh, what was the question? What were they, what were they asking again? The question what, was, have you, what, with constant restrictions and unpredictable timelines for normalcy, what steps have you taken to remain inspired and positive? Inspired and positive. Um, I'll admit I've struggled with inspiration because mm-hmm. a lot of my inspiration comes from travel yeah um like <laughs> it's weird because like for me it was almost like i got cut cold turkey like 2019 i was on 27 flights that year to zero it. yeah to actually t- to one sorry i went i, I went to That's insane when you really take <laughs> in that number 2020 i went on one a one flight, sorry, two flights in 2020. I went, it was right before the co right before the COVID started. I went to Orlando and Miami for Super Bowl and, and Pro Bowl. And that was my last trip. So I went from 27 flights to two uh. to zero now or one. I went to ATL. That's wild. Cause most people only even, most people take like one or two flights a year. I'm saying for me, I know, like, I know, I know, I know, I know. That is cold turkey. <laughs> <laughs> like, you just cut off. The, you like, didn't like get split in half. I just, just gone. So to me, it's like my brain. It it's really it's definitely struggling right now. I know it is because mm. I'm just like you can feel it. I feel it. Like I I I feel it to the point that like it's not normal mm. for me to to even be home this long. Yeah, um, yeah. Over the so, years, I've gotten to know you. That's very true. It's it's definitely I've definitely struggled with inspiration. Um, and my inspiration doesn't come from necessarily places. It comes from environment, environments, and right. Yeah, like it's not like I need to be in fucking Paris or or Miami to be inspired. It's it's. I need it's another environment because when, when I'm there, I see something else. You just need that, new stimulation. That's what you need. It's it. Yeah. It's not. It's not necessarily like I need to be in this particular city or country. It's just like when I'm somewhere else, I meet new people and I yeah. see new things, and I come back home and I'm like, ah, oh, shit. This would be a perfect way to tie yeah. something I saw in Madrid, mm. and I can create something home, back home in Toronto. Mm. Something I did in here, and like, and I just pull from places I've seen and things I've seen. Yeah. I don't necessarily need to be in a different place to be inspired there. Like it's mm. not me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Like I'm, I pull from my experiences. So like when I'm not leaving over and over and over again, and I'm in, I, I feel like, like put it this way, a large region, a, a large reason of why I quit my job was so I could freely travel whenever freely I wanted travel, to have the flexibility. Like, so it's like, the autonomy to, to work for myself now. And I'm restricted from doing the things, the things you. I quit to do. It's like, if it almost feels like I'm trapped again in my career, hmm. that's an interesting observation. Yeah. Like I'm, I feel like I'm trapped in my own chosen career, which is like a really weird feeling to have. Like that's, you chose this, but I'm trapped. <laughs> it's like, like I might as well be in my office. Yeah. That's like a very interesting I'm doing the things I love, sure, for my career, but am I anymore? Huh. No. So, like, 
Because you're, you're grounded. So, I'm, so I feel like I've I'm I've selected the lifestyle and the career for myself that I once loved that I can no longer indulge in. Yeah. But I still have to pay the bills. Still have to get up and get things done without the enjoyment of why I quit. So it's I've definitely been struggling with that. Um, inspiration wise, and I don't know how to solve that without leaving. <laughs> like I don't know how to. That's not something. There's no replaceable thing for that. Um, you know, even clients I have in the states are like, "Yo, when can you guys travel?" I'm like, "I don't, I don't know." So, so like when they're asking, "Yo, like you guys still on lockdown?" Yeah, like someone wants to find me to do something. I'm like, I I can't even take the job to do something because I'm like, all the hassle when I come back home is a stress. So you want to think yeah. about that. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, technically I could technically hop on the plane right now, go to wherever, do shoot the thing, whatever, whatever there. But the concept and the stress of me when I have to come back home and the potentially quarantine in this fucking hotel, maybe, or whatever yeah. the fuck they're saying, and then be out of work for this amount of time. And then it's just like all that. I'm just like, no, it's not worth like, it. And I yeah. just end up saying, no, I'm just like, never mind. Like yeah, so it's like okay, it's like it's not worth it. Thanks, guys. Like, <laughs> like it just, it just, it almost feels like the only way, the only way I'd be willing to, to leave the country is if it was like a six month gig, mm. where it's yeah, like you know it's gonna be extended. I'm literally gone for a period of time. So whatever the six months is done, I have my money, I have experience, whatever. And when I come back after six months, fuck, you want to maybe quarantine for a month, blah, whatever, mm. like whatever. But for me to leave for a couple of weeks, like I'm not doing it like it just yeah. it just feels so discouraging you know so and then you know to get a six-month gig it's like it's tough i can't well not, not only is it tough but can i technically be away for six months right now no no yeah because <laughs> of all the other obligations you got going on so here it's like yeah. what what solution do i really have so that's definitely where i struggle inspiration wise um like so what what do you think you need to start doing then? Like what? I have no idea. Like I'm currently in this process of like, what, how what do, you, do get, you do? How do you get out of this, this feeling, you know, of like, <laughs> like it's, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm literally in the, pro- I've been in the process for the last year and a half of like figuring out like, what do you, I feel like you probably need to just start looking at some alternative like self-care shit because a lot of what you just explained about you know your work and like that's a very it's very like good observation you made about this is why I quit working corporate in the first place and now I don't have the ability to do this right now so it's put you in like a mental space where it feels like I'm not even liking what I'm doing anymore because I'm missing a key component, right? It feels more like a job than anything now. Definitely. So, so I feel like th- th- the thing is like a lot of it, a lot of it is completely out of our control. Like if you, if you really wanted to, if you really wanted to, you could go away for six months. It would just mean that you'd have to like, literally change your entire business that you have set up right now. Right. And then it's like, is that even worth it to do? Like, are these things even, worth, you know what I mean? Like it, it just presents like what's worth it. You know, like it, that's the question that we all have to answer at this, some point. Right. Cause like, I think everything always comes down to what's worth it. Right. I think, I, think that, it, I think that's always the question we ask ourselves. Yeah, but I think even worth it. But I think after your recent like health, you know, uh, episode that you just went through. I think it's safe to say that you realize, you know, you, you your health, whether it's physical and mental, are probably like the most important things. You know, like I love fucking making money, but and sometimes I think to myself, fuck, if I don't do this this month, like it's I'm gonna bite me in the ass later. Like I gotta go make this money, and then I've just I've I've literally gotten to a point sometimes where. I say, I'm not worried. Like the money is always going to come. 
I don't know why. I, it's not it's not like the best mentality to have, but I've never had an issue getting money. Like I haven't had an issue getting money in like the last five years, five, six years. Because I've just done enough work to know that I'm always putting myself in a position to constantly get money. I have multiple streams of income. So now it's like, okay, once I got past the hurdle of saying, all right, I'm not stressed about the money. I'm not stressed as much. Now it's, I'm more so stressed about my own well being, Cause that shit, that's, that's so much harder to fix. You know what I mean? Like it's so much harder to fix. You and I can go get money tomorrow. Like if I need to go make a grand tomorrow, I can do that easy. Not hard. It's really fucking hard to like take care of yourself. Right. When, especially when you're in these positions that aren't favorable to us. So I feel like you got to look into some other shit, like figure out something else to, to supplement what you do right now. That's like just for you. Like, just like, I think that's always been my struggle. We, people, like I've been asked countless times, mm. people, girls, whatever, like, what do you do for you? I don't fucking know. Mm. Like I, I actually, I used to know, but now I don't like, what do I actually do for Ryan? Like for me, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I used, I mean, I, I would create, but like create, which is also synonymous with my career. So it's like, it's, is that for me? Technically sure, I guess, but a distinctive thing for me, like, I don't, I don't know, you know? And it's like, I mean, it used to be me just fucking picking up and disappearing and mm. I would just fucking travel. Yeah. So now that I don't have that is something I would do for me. That was actually something I could be like, this is for me. I get up going somewhere. I'm going to leave for a week. Mm. That is for Ryan. No one can tell me to do. Go ahead. Now it's like, is there a thing that I'm like, this is distinctly for me every week, every month? No, I feel like I'm, you know, a, a, a vessel, a product of what I've built for myself, but not, I can't distinctly say like, I have a thing that I do. I mean, and mm. I'm injured too, right? Mm. Like, yeah. I, that's like, I feel like even that's something I feel like I've suppressed mm. because it's just been so long now, mm. but basketball is huge for me. Mm. Can't do that. Can't, can't run. Like, and I, I, maybe it's all compounding at this point now. I don't know. Like maybe it's yeah. just, I think it's, I think it's just like, a series of things that have like compounded one on top of each other in the middle of a pandemic. So it's, it's, it's actually makes more sense. It, it would make more sense that you would go through a phase like this than not. Right. Like if you didn't, I'd be like, that's really strange. Like it makes sense that you didn't, but I'd be like, Oh, that's strange. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what that thing is, but that's the thing that we got to figure out. Right. Because you said at the very beginning, like you're fucking nothing else matters. Like you can have all the money in the world. Nothing else matters if your own personal health is not good. And we often overlook the mental side of that too, you know? So that's really the tough part. It's really the tough part. And especially what we're doing now, like, you know, you realize that you can't, you can't, you can't even supplement that with other people sometimes. <laughs> no, no. You can't. That's the thing. You can't. Like, I feel like I've been so. <laughs> I feel like like I don't know how I mean I don't know how your allies are different similar but different but for me I feel like women right now are like the most annoying thing to me like not not like women as a as a fucking yeah I just mean like interacting with women on a romantic level right now is yeah. the most annoying thing. <laughs> like to me, I'm just like, Explain. Explain. I just, I just don't want to do it. Like I, I feel like, I, I feel like because yeah, maybe, maybe it's like, it, it's that, it's that cliche. They say like, until you're at peace with yourself, like you're not going to be, it's like to engage in that with I mean, but I was just like, I don't even really, what am I doing here? I don't really want to do anything. I mean, like, I get that. Like, 
I definitely get it. It's like, I feel like I'd be more susceptible and more open to it if I was, you know, I felt good about my life right now and I was mm. traveling and felt free and felt like myself and wasn't injured, for example. <laughs> like, I was still injured. It's so like all this other stuff. Like, I feel like at that point, I'd be more open to even communicating mm. and like potentially seeing where something could go with. But I think because there's so much happening right now in my life, I'm like, I don't want a woman to be a crutch in any way. Yeah. Like ever, ever. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, I'd rather just not do it. Like I'd rather just not even pretend like you're not solving a problem rather than being in addition to something. Hmm. I never want a girl to feel, they'll never feel like it, but it, I'll know that I'm using a woman to solve a problem. Absolutely. Rather than she's adding to something right now. I don't feel like talking to someone right now is adding to, to anything. I feel like it'd be solving anything and not a, not a problem that I, I, that a woman should be solving. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like that's the, I feel like it's a slot they're going to fall into right now. Mm. If I, allow anything yeah right now. i get that i fully yeah i fully understand that fully understand i that. can't give them that yeah it's, it's, it wouldn't be fair to you and it's definitely not fair to them yeah right? and it's uh it's de- yeah it's just definitely tough man like <laughs> this whole like i keep making this joke that i'm like yo i feel like i'm just gonna fucking find some girl in this random country in the world mm. and i i honestly think that's gonna happen like i think i'm just one day just gonna just get up and just go somewhere for like a couple months and just meet some meet find myself find mm. the things i want to do blah, blah 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 and just find someone out there that i'd be like i would if i had not left at this day i would never have crossed past this person yeah you know um it's, it's the same thing we talk about all the time, like proximity versus, um, versus whatever the other word, it, word yeah. is rationalism or whatever. But we, we tend to choose proximity all the time. Well, they're in their local it's in Toronto. It's easier. Yeah. Not to worry about long distance. Not to worry about moving. And like, we just want things to be easy. We want things to be easy to the choir, man. Like huh? I said, you're preaching. You, to the we choir. just want things to be easy. Like it'd be, it'd be so much to, easier if you preach the girl the that I want is right here in Toronto, down the street. Already fucking knows the area. Already knows my lifestyle. Mm. Already knows. Don't have to really move too much. Like don't have to really disrupt anything. Like we don't. We we as people hate disruption. We just don't like disruption. So if it's easier, if my life is just like this, you just add into it yeah perfect. you add into it and i add ah. into yours cool everything's <laughs> perfect everything's blessed no maybe mm-hmm. the person that's for you you and i has to force us to be disrupted bro like i think uh, that yeah like uh, like it has to make you be like you're gonna, you're gonna have to do something very uncomfortable for this to work yeah so and, go ahead i i dude i fucking get it like i fully 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 get it because um you know that's kind of like where in terms of like this whole relationship dating figuring out yourself like that's kind of where i'm at and it's so fucked man because you know covid in general has done a lot to people's mental in so many different ways and i've i've basically i've almost completed my covid bingo board <laughs> like yeah, yeah i've done everything I, like, I get it now i got you it know what i mean i've done everything i got it the only thing I haven't done yet, it, well, no, I got a pet. I got a cat that my ex has, and I might be getting a dog now. So it's like, bingo board is going to be complete. The only thing I haven't done is get into a relationship, I guess, if that's on there. But, you know, I feel like this, we live in, we're living like this fake time right now. It's like a year that doesn't really exist, but it does. And second year. Yeah. And parts of it, 
parts of it make me feel like it's accelerated as well. Yes. So, you know, I'll explain like this. I haven't been single that long. I've been single for like five months. Right? Which in the grand scheme of things is not a long time. Actually, no, six months. Not a long time. But I promise you, it feels like I've been single for a year. It's pressure filled. <laughs> like it's just. It feels like I've been single for a year. Yes. And it's like, sometimes I catch myself and I say, why do I already feel like <laughs> I'm tired I, of this? <laughs> I'm tired of this single life. Like, why do yeah. I all, why do I, why am I saying this? I haven't been single that long. Like, mm-hmm. why do I already feel this way? And it's because of this time that we're in while I've been single. It's too much talking. There's so much going on that I'm like, I don't like any of Like, I don't. <laughs> I know what I fucking want. Yeah. I know. I know what I want. I know who I want. I know how I want to go about it. And I'm just, I'm realizing that all those things aren't within my control, right? There's only so much that I can do. And it's like, okay, you got to fucking keep it moving. You got to keep the train moving. And then I think to myself, like, okay, do I fucking, do I actually want, do I want a relationship actually? Or do I want something where, uh, let's just see where do I want something stable that I think we could work towards right because yeah I do think it's too soon for me to just commit to another relationship right now and I think it's too soon for someone else as well I just I'm just tired of the whole talking bullshit all that stuff because people get caught up they miss red flags they fucking you know end up in shit that they really shouldn't and it's not their fault because of all these circumstances, like it's, it's, it's fucked. So now it's like, yeah, I don't want to get involved with certain people because they're clearly just fulfilling a slot or a role currently. And I'm doing the exact same to them for them. Yeah. And it's like, okay, sure. If you have that conversation and we understand what it is. Cool. That's one thing, but it's another when you, you're not aligned. Like you're not aligned and it I, bites you in the ass. I have a question. How do you know? How do you, you, you said you, you said, you know, you want, you know who you want. What how do, do I know that? that? Yeah. How do you, how do you, how, do I how are you that? so sure? Yeah. Not that you're not, like, not that you don't. Like, how did I come to that? Conclusion? Maybe you do. I don't know. Like but, how did I come to that? Conclusion? Yeah. Like how, how do you know that you know what you want, what it is you're looking for. What are you so, looking for? What it is you'd like to receive? Okay. So I don't think you're actually actively looking yeah. for. Yeah. But how do you know that you know what, you, what it is? If it fucking landed on your fucking face. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> like a girl literally, literally, lands yeah, on, yeah. literally lands on your face. How do you know that? You know what? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is it. This is right. This not is even right. This is, yeah. Not even this is this it. Is, this is right. Not even this is it. Just this is this is right. How yeah. do you know? I, to answer quickly, thought I did. Mm. I have thought I have many times, mm. and I've proven myself wrong. And then I've done my recalculations. I've done my observations, and I've watched people. Yeah. And I met people. Blah, blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay, now now I, now I know. Yeah. But then it's like. I've met a lot of people. <laughs> so many people. <laughs> a lot. So many people I've met to the point that I'm like, do I even know? Because I, what I do know in my mind, in theory, is what I don't want. Hmm. Okay. Because I, I can sit right here and meet someone and be like, it's a no for me. That's a no for me. Yeah, you know right That's away. That's a no for me. That's a no for me. But I... I can do that so easy with ease. Hmm. But to, to say this is a yes for me is so much more difficult. And do I actually know if I fucking saw it? So that's the thing you, okay. For me, Go. you had, you had said, when I said, yeah, this is it. And you're like, no, this is right. That is what's made me feel like I know now because, you know, this time has been super short, but fucking, highly condensed right and i'm sure it's gonna be like this for the next 
couple months, a year as well. Like, I don't know who I'm going to run into that's we're going to align. Things are going to change. But yeah, like I, I, if I'm being honest, like I think I had a, I had an experience where I was like, this is right. And it was after doing, going through that whole other phase where I'm like, everything's condensed. Everything's condensed. I'm seeing all these different people. Like, and you just know, you're like, no, 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 no. Like you just know. And then you have someone that says, this is right. Like not, this is the one, this is what makes me happy is this is right. So then it was a confirmation in my head of like, okay, I know this is right. And it's also a, in conjunction with this is what I don't want. Like we all know what it is that we don't want. And then I did a whole bunch of fucking internal work, like figuring out like, okay, like why, why do I act like this in relationships? How do I even get myself in some of these positions? Like, why did I start dating people the way that I did? Like, why did I just jump into these three year relationships? Not knowing that they were going to be this long term and consume right. my life. Like, yeah, I really had to think about my dating habits and like what it is that I was projecting to these women, like all the, all this shit. And then it got to a point where I was like, okay, like I know what my non-negotiables, non-negotiables are. So if you already align with my non-negotiables, we're off to a good start. A lot of people have non-negotiables and they bend them all the time, right? A lot of people who you tell your non-negotiables to and those people will like adhere to them for a bit and then they fucking, they fuck them. Right. If I tell you what my non-negotiables are and you don't even question them, you're like, okay, cool. I'm already a little intrigued. Not like I like you. I'm already a little intrigued. Right, right. Because at this stage, you can't afford to have like a back and forth about that. Right. right? There's nothing below that. <laughs> nothing. It's not even a conversation. That these, this is my bottom line. Period. That's, that's my bottom and line. you go, okay, cool. You're like, okay. Okay. All right. Now we can talk about some other stuff. And you tell me yours. If I feel the same way, we, we have the conversation going. I just feel like... <sighs> I feel like I know. I feel like I know after all of this shit, bro. Like, yeah, I've, I've been a relationship guy all these years. So it's like, I've never known what it's like to be single. And I know that I'm not codependent. Like, I, I can't thrive on my own without a relationship. Like, that much has become clear now that I can. I just know. I just know that I'm not one to, like, actually enjoy a lot of the shit that comes with being single, which is weird because a lot of us do it like that. Yeah. It's enjoyable at times, but it gets tiring very quickly for me personally, because either it's because I'm too sensitive or I'm just, no, I, I think, I think like, I think, I think I'm also there um, in a different way. I think, I think for me being single I think for me, sorry, I think for me being in a relationship becomes more appealing when your priorities change. Right? Yeah. I, I don't think, like, I, I think the people who like being single, genuinely like being single. Yeah. They have single priorities, which, which, are, which are fine, but they they don't actually, they don't actually view things from a team perspective. And you, you said something, I think two episodes ago, where we talked about when you're single, I'm not telling anything to anyone. Right. right? Like I'm not saying anything to anyone, all this shit. And I, and I, I get that because I'm the same way, but it's like, I'll be honest. I, I, w- I want to like build some shit with someone. Exactly. And it's like, I can do it on my own. I know that the type of girl that I would be into or like. Would be doing their own on their own. They'd be doing their own thing too, regardless. Yeah. But I fucking. You yearn for it. Yeah. Like I want to, I want to, I want to share, I want to share some shit with someone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's what I, that's what I want. Like I don't, I get it. Like I, I know that I'm successful. I know that I'm single. 
I know now that like, you know, women find me attractive, like all this, all this stuff. I know these things are in my favor, but it's like this catch 22. I know that I want to share shit with someone, but I'm waiting for someone to like fucking step up. Mm. Is that weird? Because no, no. I put some, I, I, I have no issue putting myself out there, yeah. but I have a problem with like, I, I, I feel like I'm at a stage where it's like, I want the, the type of person that I think that I want, that I know that I want, they would see me, I would see them and they would just say like, let's do like, let's do this. We know this is supposed, like, we know this is right. Like we know it's supposed to work. Why are we doing anything different right now? But do you think, is there, is there any leeway on that? In what sense? Like, I'm, you know, I'm flexible, but what do you mean leeway? No, like the woman, the woman that could fit for you, Mm. is there any leeway on the approach? Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, yeah. She doesn't like to- they're like in a perfect scenario. It's like, oh yeah, this is definitely it. Yeah, it doesn't have hundred percent. It doesn't have to be, let's, to be let's, so- fuck it, let's do it. Fuck yeah. it. Versus there may be an, there may still be that energy, but it doesn't come off that. It, it's it might be like, I just need him to fucking pull me. Yeah. Okay. So here's the right. Thing. Like, cause here's the thing. Yeah, it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be so direct on her end. Whereas, like, I need you to do this, right? Like. And because you said step up, so yes, it's like yeah. sometimes it's, girls, so sometimes they're sometimes they're stepping up, just not that way. So I'll explain. I'll explain why right. I said this, right? Because I was talking to my two homegirls about this. Like lately, the women that have like caught my attention are the ones where they've been direct, right? Right? Whether it's the the conversation is just very straight to the point, or it's none of this weird game shit. Which I don't even know how to probably describe, but we yeah, all know what that know means. What it, you know what right? We all know what it means. So that's the type that's literally just caught me. So for me, when I say step up, it's more so it's more so just being very clear with your intentions. Right? Like we can it doesn't have to be I see you, you see me, let's just fucking do this. It's like if we're in that talking stage. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be guessing what the fuck is going on. Like where we're at, because I've already made it clear from my, right. Right. right? I I don't have an issue with like a woman saying to me, you know, like I'm not ready right now for these specific reasons. Right. I don't have an issue with that. I just, I have an issue with that. I don't know mentality that we mentioned. I can't, can't can't I cannot do that. I got, no, I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's tough because where I'm, where I'm at, if I'm like, if I'm into someone and they tell me like, they're not ready, or whatever it is, it is what it is. Like, I get it. Like people are at different stages for different things. It just makes it very difficult because it's tough to already get to that point for me where I'm like, yeah, like, and then retract and then retract, like kind of, kind of retract. So I'm like, okay, let me just recalibrate. That's not normal though. It's not normal. It's not normal. Like, but it is, it's like, what I mean, you're, 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 f- you're forced to. But that's the not, this is just not normal. I know exactly what you're saying. Cause I, th- I think like we both, we both admitted pr- previously that we're slightly jaded, jaded in ways, jaded in ways, um, just based on things we've done and how they've yeah played out. It's kind of, obviously it's caused you to be like, ugh, ugh. like, it's just one of those feels like, fuck like okay all right whatever like yeah. i can adjust to this it's not cool but mm-hmm. i could do it you know what i mean but i think i think that that moment where things feel natural yeah and then have to become unnatural mm. is where it's like it it, it makes things difficult yeah because like this up until this point i've been naturally acting doing naturally mm. responding naturally seeing you naturally everything to this point has been i've been doing things within my natural progression natural yeah. feeling of things natural timing without rushing blah blah blah, without even thinking mm. which is the, the biggest part i've just been doing things 
without having to be like, should I, maybe, mm. could I? Like, you've just been naturally just, just being, and this feels good. And then when it gets to this point where there's a, a misalignment on either end for a particular thing, then you start to think. And now that you're thinking, it's no longer natural. Now, you're no, now it's no longer natural. Everything's out of whack. It's like, now I, I hate that I'm aware of what I'm doing. Like, I don't want to, like, not in a crazy way, but I don't want to be aware of how I'm behaving with somebody. I don't want to be like, okay, should I touch her today? Because last time was kind of, like, I because when you weren't thinking like that, you're just doing, you're literally just living, being, if you grab her, she grabs, she grabs, you grab her. Like it's, it was just a thing. But then when the, the thinking element gets thrown into it because of some disruption on someone's end, now there's all this processing to just, to just being in that. And I think that kind of starts to destroy bit by bit whatever you could have because it's like and you can't go backwards you can't just be like okay let me just tone it down like when people people try to say okay i'm gonna tone down my feel like it's not fucking real like <laughs> you can't it's not a thing to just tone down your feelings it doesn't make it doesn't make sense it's not <laughs> like no but it's not real like we we oh, we tell ourselves we can do it Oh we believe God. we oh okay let me just okay let me just chill like no you, you there is no chill out it's this is where i'm at right where are you at okay i'm here okay you're lower than i'm at fine got it there's no pride involved i get mm. it i like you more you like me or whatever the case may be but i can't catch up to i can't catch it down to you so we either have to agree that this is okay you know what fine i'll, I'll fucking bite the bullet and be like yo i got i got ahead of you I'm, maybe I wanted more than what you wanted, whatever, whatever. But at the same time, we can't progress from you. Like this is, I I don't want you to speed up because that's unauthentic and unnatural. And you can't ask, yeah. And you can't ask me to slow down. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Like I, you can't be like, okay, you just no, I can't just come down, which is fine. But a decision, a decision has to be made for a direction for us because once you've acknowledged this we know like it, it, it's like it, it's like it's it's being ignorant pretend like when you didn't know you're just both moving you're just moving it doesn't no one actually knows there's no quantification of who likes who more <laughs> no one there is no fucking yeah, yeah, metric yeah. so no one really knows anything but yep. once we're both aware of this, we look each other in the face like, fuck, like, I'm here and you're here. We both know this now. There is, no, we can't pretend anymore. We can't go back to that fucking thing where we're just, can we just go back to, no, we're, it's done. That's done. It's dead. <laughs> That's done. So we either can accept that we progress with these, um, with these indifferences. Mm -hmm. And be okay with it, and maybe you will catch up, or maybe I will level out, or whatever it is. Or we're like, "Yo, we just don't feel the same." And that's just, and that's that's fine. It sucks, but that's fine too. Yeah. But I think it's so much harder for us to look at someone and be like, "I don't feel the same," and I also have to let you go. I don't yeah. like. I don't dislike you. Yeah. But I also have to let you go because I know how i feel how i feel yeah you know yeah so I, <laughs> it's fucked i know you know exactly what i'm talking about yeah it's fucked but it's like i think we're i think we're at a stage both of us where it's like <laughs> i don't want to have to think i don't want to have to question yeah you, look see that's exactly it that's exactly it. I don't have to think about it. And it's like when you have when you when you get into a situation where you say, "Oh, I don't have to I I wouldn't have to think about this. I don't have to think about this." And then to go backwards. Yes. Then you're like, "Okay, it's a different honestly, it's a different kind of jaded." 
mm-hmm. because you're not you're it's not because jaded has such a negative connotation to it you're you don't actually have like any negative feelings whatsoever no, no. at all no, like no, no, you no. don't have any negative feelings <laughs> no. whatsoever to these people no more than just if just, anything it's just frustration if anything you have negative feelings towards yourself yes because you're like oh I get here you're like oh, look i can't believe i put myself in that position but, but you didn't like <laughs> you kind of did bro like you didn't you didn't like obviously two parties were involved but when i say that you but there's absolutely no way to stop that i know there isn't i'm just <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, ju- I'm just saying like like it's, it's, it's like very it's very high school yeah you know what i mean like yeah, it's yeah. a very the best way i would say it is it's a very innocent feeling because mm-hmm. you're like i'm not thinking this is what my mind and my body is telling me like when something is right everything just like everything to you just aligns yeah right obviously there'll be some complications like how's this gonna affect this how's this gonna affect that you think about it but you're like no like this seems right like this seems right and then you have to dial back and if it was any if it was any other person the dial back wouldn't even be uh it wouldn't cause you any sort of conflict. So you'd be like, okay, cool. Peace. You're like, all right, bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see each other when we see each other. But like when it's these situations, you dial back strictly out of like respect and like actual and, respect. Actual respect and genuine feelings where you're like, and you're not even dialing back because you're saying, if I dial back now maybe it'll like come around no, it, you're literally dialing you're, back and you're just like it's not even it's not even on a manipulation type of thing yeah like you're it's, just it's like not even like, like okay let me do it let me let me dial back now to try and to try and salvage this no and you're actually willing to just like this could literally fucking end it all because you know what it is <laughs> like, you know what it is when you make the decision to step back like you dial back two things are happening in your head you're like this is the right decision to make. The given, mature, mature decision. This is a mature decision to make given all the information I have. And your head is simultaneously also saying, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> why are you, why are you actively killing it? Why are you actively putting a hard boundary on this right now? You know what I mean? Well, you don't actually have to, but you feel like you must. Like no one's making you do it, <laughs> bro. Bro, no, one's, no, no one has a gun to your head. No one is making you do this today. <laughs> you want to hear something hilarious? So, why, how this relates? What? I'm not gonna go into. I'm not gonna go into the full fine. detail. But, but basically, I had a scenario like that where some shit came up. And I basically had a realization at one point where I was like, I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to put a boundary on this that I don't want to. Like, I genuinely don't want to. Like, I was verbal, like, I'm talking to yourself. I'm sure this, no, I, the realization came up mid conversation with this person. Oh, you're physically there. Still. Physically there. And you're like, wow. And my body like had this thing where it was like, oh no, you're going to have to say this. And I had like an internal struggle. Did you like, say at that moment? I though? did. At the moment at too. At the moment too. I was like, yo, my mind is te- like, it is actually telling me to say this because you know, it's the right thing to do. And if you don't, I feel like I'm d- being dishonest. Yes. That's the thing. It's like, if I don't say this, I feel like I'm lying to you. You don't okay. even know what I'm talking about. I feel like I'm lying. <laughs> you don't even yeah, know what's in my head. I feel like I'm lying to you about my intentions. Mm. And I, because of how I feel, I don't want to lie to you. Right? So I'm going to tell you the truth. And like the truth <laughs> is not favorable to me at all. So I'm like, all right, like it is what it is. So you, I remember saying it. And I also said, I don't like that I'm saying any of this. I actually don't. But I feel like I would be like 
really disingenuous if I didn't say what, what I'm actually thinking right now. And I was like, you didn't, bro, have to, you didn't have to do that. You know what happened? It was like a sitcom. So after we had the conversation, the conversation was great, right? Like it's to the best it could be. It was, <laughs> but I mean, like she was like, even like, it was actually like a very mature conversation. Right. It was like rare that I've had something like this. And I remember, <laughs> I remember driving home, driving home. I get in the shower. Literally the entire way home to when I got home, put down my bags, when I got in the shower, I must have said the word fuck. <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. Like, at least, I must have said at least 40 times. Because you're just like, why? Yo, I'm driving home and I literally, I literally said at one point, I'm at a red light why and I look through the mirror that? and I'm like, I'm like, what did you do? I was like, I was like, why the fuck did you do that? I was like, are you stupid? Like, why did you do that? Because I'm thinking like, I, and the only reason I'm saying that is because I felt like making this decision was me putting a hard boundary. For no reason. And I was In like, your mind, for no reason. I was like, why did I put this hard boundary? And like you said, it wasn't even on some manipulation shit. No, it's, it's, it's because I said, Zamora, you, you're going to make a right decision. You're going to make a mature decision here. That's what being an adult is about. Making I'm, like these mature decisions that you do not like. Like there's no do you know do you know, do you know how crazy it is? Do you know how crazy it is emotionally, mentally, romantically to make a decision that doesn't have you winning at the end? <laughs> <laughs> like or do you like do, people naturally People naturally do things that favor themselves all the time, every whether it's day. work, sport, money, life, love, yeah. travel with the fuck. They naturally do things that favor themselves. Do you know how difficult it is to knowingly and like to knowing not only knowingly, but confidently. Yeah, do, it's, a, it's a confident part. Yeah, confidently do something or say something that you know does not have you winning at the end. Yeah, and still doing it. Yeah, you know, you look at yourself differently. You're like, "What the hell? Who is this?" But but then it's part of you. Are, part of you is like, it's the fact that you know that you're actively blocking a good thing. Yes, <laughs> it's like you're. You're an active participant <laughs> in saying, I'm going to stop this, even though I know that it would be a good thing. Uh, but you're <laughs> See how speechless you but, are? Yeah, it, because it doesn't make sense in it, your but head. It, it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes you, sense because it makes sense because we're products of pattern. Hmm. Okay. Right? So it's like, you're not making that decision on a whim. Yeah, you're, you're, you're making not. it because I know how this plays out. Like you, you like someone could argue. It's like, well, you never know, blah blah. Yeah, but but you do. You do. Like you do. You do. Like anyone can argue. Like I'm not that girl. I'm not that guy. It's a different scenario this time, or things could things could. You, you know what? They could. In any scenario, hmm. yes, it. I still could be wrong. I could, and the thing is, that was already a thought as well. Hmm. That I could be wrong. Like it's not like there's there's no decision I'm making like that where I'm ending something or I'm putting a bad news somewhere where I don't think I could be wrong. Like you're aware of that possibility too, and you're yeah. still going forward, yeah, knowing that like <laughs> this. <laughs> this could be wrong. Yeah, like, <laughs> like what, I'm, what I'm saying right now, it could be wrong. I could have made a mistake, and I'm still doing it. It's not like there's no no there's no scenario where I went into a decision like that, being like this is 100 percent the right thing to do. No way, hmm. no way. <laughs> Part of me is like, you could be fucking this the fuck up right now. <laughs> <laughs> For real, you really could be fucking this the fuck up, and you'll never know until it's done. You'll never know if you fucking fuck this up until you do it and time passes and you look back 
And maybe at that time you have a chance to reconcile whatever, mm. but maybe you don't. Mm. But you have to understand that right now you are making a decision entirely on your own merit. And this could be absolutely fucking wrong. And you do it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> you do it anyway because it feels right to do. Yeah. Not the feeling, but it feels right to, to do. do. You, and you said something earlier though about the patterns. Like, yes. I think the reason that's so challenging about it is because, yes, we're creatures of habit. We follow certain patterns. But this time, you're not following your pattern. Like, yes. like typically, typically you let it happen. You, you just, you're like, fuck it. I'll see where things go. But now, now you're having a moment where you're saying you're breaking the pattern. Yeah. You're having an internal dialogue, like a moment where you're saying this is more, this isn't what you usually do. This is what you would normally do in this position, but I'm going to have to have you make this decision this time. And you're like, nah, I don't, you're like, I don't want to do it. But then you're, but then you're like, nah, you're going to have to do it. You're going to have to. You're going to have to do it. I'm actually not going to let you leave this conversation without saying that. And after you have the conversation or you have that mature moment, you feel maybe I would say I'm being generous. You probably feel 40% good about it. <laughs> it's definitely under 50. It's definitely under 50. You know that it was, you're like, cool. You can pat yourself on the back for saying so mature, <laughs> for being, being noble, noble. Or whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But you feel 40% good about it. Mm-hmm. And you're like, all right, what's the next, what do we do now? <laughs> like, what's the next steps? And you did all of this. You did all of it. <laughs> like you had. You know, I struggle, you know, I struggle, you know, you know, I struggle, what? You, know, you, know what? I, you know, I struggle the most with what? these type of situations. <laughs> Talk to me. What? <laughs> like, as it sounds so, I like, it sounds so morbid. But I okay, just, go on. I don't want to hear just, this. It's just the way I fucking am. Like. <laughs> if A. If a if you if you died tomorrow and this decision you made yeah had to now hold true for the rest of life in their life <laughs> okay are you still confident you made the right choice because you made these choices certain choices in life because they're like this will come back around at some point in life not the person per se mm. a situation a better situation for me or something that f- it's more fitting or whatever it might not even be this person but i'm making a decision now in life to put myself in a position to receive something better in the future potentially but if we if you were to die today and there is no other situation potentially in life would you still look back at that and be like that was still right at that moment to do i don't now that I know that there is no potential anything mm. else, was that still the right decision or did, I, or did I make that decision because I believe there's so much future out there for me? Am I making that decision based on optimism and, and potential? Or am I making that decision because I genuinely feel like this is the best thing to do for, for, for me? So that's a, that's a very interesting question because when I think about the scenario I just told you, I don't, I don't, I don't entirely know if I made the right decision. We never know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I entirely don't know because I feel like under normal circumstances, like if things were normal, you know, let's just say things were normal and the, the, the dynamic and shit was still the same. A part of me says, would I have still done that? Yeah. Like, would I have? <clears throat> would I have uh, folded <laughs> so easily? Like, would I have, or would I have put up more of a a fight about it? Like, would I have just accepted the? We both know this is where it's supposed to go, but blah 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 blah. Would I have just accepted that? 
or would I have said no? Like you know that, like you know deep down, just as much as I know, that this is a good thing, right? And not on some like fuck boy shit. No, like you like, know, it's a good thing for multiple reasons based on our own past and history. Blah 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 blah. Would I have been so okay with just saying? I have to block this situation for now for these reasons. I don't know. Like, I genuinely don't know. I feel like I said what I said because, you know, given the circumstances, I was like, I cannot, I cannot infringe on this any further based on what I represent to this person, based on all these external factors, right? That I'm not going to, I can't go into on here, but like, I was like, yeah, no, I was like, this feels like the right move to make feels like the right move to make, but I'm not confident that I'm not confident at all that you'd make it again. Yeah, I'm not confident in that. I'm not confident that I know we talked about this isn't some manipulation thing because it's not at all. Yes, yeah, but I'm more in the camp that when I made that decision, it like I just was like, yeah, like that's, this is, this will never be a thing. I'm not confident ever again. Yeah. I'm not confident that me saying this to to this person now could actually turn into something between us later. Later. That's like, that's not why you made it. Yeah. That's not why I made it. But I'm, if you were to ask me, do I think something could happen? I'm like, not confident in that at all based on the decision that I made now. Right. And that's, what's rattling. Cause you, you make this decision, you say this thing that's not favorable to you because you, because you, you're like, this is the right thing to do. And you're also coming to the terms with the fact that when I make this decision, I feel like it's also actually going to block anything in the future. Yeah. And I'm, I'm accepting that. And I'm accepting that, you know, it's not, it's not fun. Like it's really not like there's no part of it that's enjoyable. Great conversation, like it's a mature, great conversation to have, but personally, like selfishly, yeah. you're like, yeah, this sucks. And you're like, okay, bet. Like, am I going to feel this way about another person? Probably. I think so. Like, based on numbers, <laughs> like, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> the, you, you, you'd like to. The ish- yeah, you'd so. like to. The issue is. Yes, there's so many people in this world. The numbers say, yeah, you're going to run into more people like this. Proximity, maybe I will, maybe I won't. It's just those people don't come along often. So then you're like, okay, I definitely know I'm not going to settle. So I don't even think it's a matter of whether or not you'll meet a person like that again because you won't. Yeah, you. I think, yeah, yeah. like, I think, I think we've, I think we've got very skewed perspectives in life hmm. in general. Or you, you meet people, you're like, oh, I'll meet someone, I'll meet someone again, or I'll, some someone else out there that well, there really isn't. Yeah, like, I like, think, I think what I meant was. I know what you're. I know more what you're, so elicit the same feelings, right? But, but I don't. But I know what you mean. Yeah. I know what you. I know what you're saying. Mm. But it's like there never really is. Mm. Like even the ex, even the ex girlfriends I've had that we broke up for whatever reasons. Like I've still never met some. I've still never met anyone like them. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely do you right. Know, do you know what I'm saying? Like it does, doesn't matter. You're absolutely I like right. someone else since them. Yeah. hundred percent. But when, when we tell ourselves like, Oh, I'm sure there's someone else like, like there isn't. So it's like, you really have to make intentional decisions on like letting people go in your mm-hmm. life, who you're choosing to keep so on and so forth. Because like, whatever you like, that particular person for it's them that's it like there is yeah. no duplication of this person ever it yeah. might come close it might be oh this girl did yeah. like this or that girl used to do something similar to that but like 
whatever you have at that particular moment, with the, the, whatever you're sharing with this particular person, no one in the world has, mm. no matter the numbers. Yeah. Like that is very, that is literally how your two personalities connected specifically mm. with their, with each other. Yeah. And your personality would connect with someone else a different way, but whatever this exact fucking spark bond or whatever, this is it. So if you let that go, it's like, you're literally saying, I don't want this Mm. at least right now or definitely or whatever, but you are literally saying, I don't want this or it's not good for me, Mm. you know, whatever the reason, but it's, I don't know, man. Like it, it's, so it is a really interesting point though about like you won't ever meet someone like that because it's true you know like i get caught up in that statement because i know you knew what i meant and just to clarify for the listeners it's more so in my head i think yeah i'll meet someone and you'll the feel future something you'll feel something good again that's gonna they're gonna make me feel like this but you're right the reality is like I'm not going to meet another person who's going to make, I've never like I've dated three different girls in the past decade at no point when I dated any of these girls, did I ever say, Oh, she makes me feel like this feeling from my past relationship. The love has all been different. The feelings have all been different. So what you can, what you can say is you will feel good again. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. With someone, Hmm. but not that. Yeah. And it, and, that, and that's the thing. Like, I think that's what makes it difficult. Is because, yeah, you can you feel good when you hook up with certain people. You feel good when you are in like certain situationships, whatever you want to call it. But that feeling that we're talking about is so different, right? And it's strange because you're like, yeah, like this is a very different feeling, but it's in that same category of feeling good. Yeah. So to look at that feeling and say, I don't want this. Yeah. I don't want this. You don't believe that. Yeah. Of course you don't believe it. Like, you know that you don't believe when you're saying it and you're like, okay, well, (laughs) like, of course I want this. Yeah. Of course I want it, but I don't know what to tell you. Like not the right time. Not the right time, not the right situation. There's all these factors, and you're just is, like, "Fuck, bro." Is like, it ever? Look, if you want my honest opinion, I don't think I don't think there ever is a right time. I think there personally, isn't. like, there isn't. Like, yes, I absolutely think you should be intentional with all these things that you do when it comes to dating and getting in relationships, or even like working towards shit like that. Mm-hmm. You have to be, especially at this age. I think that's the most important thing to do. But I don't think anything good comes from planning. Not necessarily planning. I don't think anything good comes from the best things in life come from shit that scares you. Comfort is the word you're looking for. Yeah. Like no, nothing good comes from comfort. Nothing good comes from comfort. Like literally the best things in life come from things that actually scare you. But it's a, it's a very particular type of scared feeling that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the type of scared where you're like, Oh, I'm in danger. Right. It's like, it's scary because it's foreign. Vulnerable. You're, you're, you're vulnerable. Let's per- you're vulnerable with them and they're vulnerable with you. It's scary because you fucking feel seen. Mm. <laughs> you know, it's all these things that like that's letting you know like on a primal level this could be really good and i'm and it it frightens me for sure you know for sure and it, it's whether or not you're okay with moving past that <laughs> that stage and i don't blame and this is the thing i literally do not blame anyone that can't who who either can or decides not to like yeah. i don't i don't i don't blame them because you're right like you have many, many valid reasons as to why you wouldn't want to go past that stage. We all have past fucking experiences, right? Or you're just going through, like you're just 
going through stages where you're evolving and it's like, yeah, it might right now actually might not be the best time despite what I want. It's just, it's just tough. It is what it is, man. It's not fun. It really is not. But what else can you do? What else can you do other than be honest? But, but that's, so that's the reason I asked that morbid question is, is because I'm like, we make all these decisions every day with the understanding Mm -hmm. or belief per se. Yeah. And the ignorance that there's always more, Mm -hmm. you know, there's always more decisions. There's always another option. Yeah. Another girl, another guy, another time, a better time, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, but it's not until you're faced with some real shit. Yeah. That it really makes you challenge yourself. Like, am I making decisions frivolously? Am I making decisions impulsively? Mm. Am I actually making the right decisions based on how I actually feel? Or am I making it based on, you know, my options I believe I may have, you know, like, it's, it's, it's just a sl- it's a slippery slope. It's very slippery. slippery because, like, you know, if I if I apply what you just said to the, the situation we're talking about, it's like, okay, cool. Did I make did I make the decision to say what I said based on how I feel? The answer is no, because how I feel doesn't align with what I said. Right? What I said was based on the situation and why I think it was the right decision to do. Because mm-hmm. how I feel, because if so you don't want to do it, yeah. If I if if <laughs> if it aligned with how I feel, I wouldn't have said it. I would have said something completely different. Right? right? But I put. I basically put. I think your non-negotiables are things that you can't infringe upon, right? But Mm -hmm. I think your feelings, I think, and this sounds harsh, but I think sometimes your feelings can be trumped by the nature of the situation. By rationalism. Exactly. 100%. That's exactly it. Like, it doesn't matter how much I like this person or feel like this would work. It doesn't trump logic. (laughs) Like I'm the same way. It doesn't trouble logic sometimes. I think that's the reason we're able to even make those, those decisions in the first place. Yeah. Because we don't, we aren't people. I mean, in most cases, I'm sure we've both done that at some point, but we aren't people that allow our feelings to trump our logic. Yeah. But it, or else you couldn't make a decision like that. Yeah. But it's there's one no of, way no one would make a decision. But that this is one of the few times though, where you're like, I wish I went against my logic. You feel that way. No, you no, you feel, that's what I'm saying. Like, right. cause I don't, I've, to be honest, I don't think I've ever really experienced that up until recently. When I was like, Oh, okay. Like I'm allowing my logic here to trump my actual feelings. Cause usually my feelings were, they were pretty accurate. Like they were never lead me to do separated. irrational shit. Like right? separated. Yeah. They're never yeah. separate. It was all intertwined. But it's just one, t- one of the few times where I'm like, oh, okay. Like I actually have to try to be like, I'm going to be very logical about this. And my feelings don't come in front of this, this one time. Cause I feel like if I put them ahead, then it could actually backfire. Mm-hmm. Right. If I put my feelings ahead of this, it could backfire against me. It could put this person in the position where they feel pressured. Like it'd be all these things. And it was almost, it was almost easier to just logically look at it and say, let me, let me, save, ju- let me save this. Let me just take the pressure off of you. Any pressure. Like, let me just take is it, it off, off of both you. of you though. Or is it just off them? I think it's, I think it's more off them than it is you because you're the one that still has to deal with your feelings afterwards mm-hmm. <laughs> where, where your feelings are now having a conversation with you saying that's the choice you wanted to make, huh? You okay with that buddy? Like that's what, it, that's what they're telling you afterwards. Yeah. You know, it's tough. Oh, it's tough, just, man. It's tough. Just makes me sick. It's like, cring- <laughs> it's cringe. It's cringe. It's cringe worthy because you get to a point where, cause you never actually know the answer. I think that's the thing. Yeah. 
we we have to make these decisions off blind faith. <laughs> like, <laughs> Pretty much. Like yeah. you Yeah, that's exactly you it. don't actually know anything. Nothing. You know? But I think you know what what brings me peace though? Yeah. If it was right, like I was saying from the beginning, Mm -hmm. like fully right, Mm -hmm. not just right in areas, but if it was fully right, I don't think you'd be in the situation. What do you mean? To to make, to have to make this decision. So you're saying that if, if things were truly like, if that situation was truly right, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even be in that position in the first place. I don't think so. See, I, that's that's what brings me peace, at least. Okay, because I, I I get that like, logic. I just I, I get that logic. Why am I here then? I get that logic. I get that logic. I really do. But the only reason I can like rebuttal that is because I think the fear feeling. I think we really underestimate like how strong that is for certain parties, right? Like mm. I was really, I was genuinely really scared. To say what I said. Of course. Super scared, right? Because you're like, I'm about to fuck this up. It's just I'm about to fuck this up or, or like it could go it could go any which way, right? And it's almost like it was scary because knowing that the person would probably be relieved to hear this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's scary. Like yes. That's a scary like they're actually not mad. It's scary me because you, me telling you this mm. actually made you feel better. Yeah. But it sucked for me to say it. Yeah, it sucks for me to say it. And it made you feel better because <laughs> for whatever reason, you're like, damn. Like, you're like, well, fuck. You're like, I don't know what to do anymore. Like, it's a scary feeling. Everything about it is scary. And I think, mm. I think we just underestimate that that feeling fear of fear factor, the fear factor behind it. I really think we underestimate it because you're right. Like in my head, I'd like to think if it was right, this wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. But sometimes like it's, it's, it's not. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah, I, it's I not, know the rebuttal. It's, I know not, it's not like a work related thing. You know, it's not like we're like, Oh, this is going to be a new scary work situation. I'm going to get myself into, but I know I'll be good. It's, it's another human being. This, it's yeah, another human being. This that you're going to have to be vulnerable with. This isn't a one plus one. Yeah. It's another human being that you're going to have to be vulnerable with where you're that is scary when you're like, I know that this feels like this feels good. Like this. I feel like I'm blocking a good thing. I feel like this is supposed to work. And that is scary because what comes with that is knowing. I don't want to fuck this up. This this feels so right right now. We're not even, we're not even dating. Like we're not even in a a relationship. relationship. We're not even dating. And this feels right. This feels good. That's scary. Yeah. That's scary. I can tell you like out of all my relationships, I never got that feeling of, I've only ever gotten that feeling of this is right. One time. Right. You just did it most times. I just got into a relationship. I had. I've only had that feeling once. So imagine someone that has a either never had that feeling before, and then B, they get that feeling when they're not even dating someone. Yeah, it's, that is scary. Yeah. <laughs> like, because the last time you felt this, the end of relationship, right? But imagine if you never had that feeling before, where you were like, "This is right." You've dated people, but you've never had this feeling where you said, this is right. Mm-hmm. And now you experience this. You have to fuck I'm actively feeling like I'm blocking a good thing. This is right. I know. I feel like this would be good. And you're not even dating yet. You're not even like, you're just talking and you feel this way. Mm-hmm. How frightening is that? Cause you're like, fuck, if I feel this way now, what might I feel like later on? And if I feel this way now, I really don't want to fuck this up. Right. Right. It's, it's, there's a lot of fear involved and it's like, how much are you willing to fucking lean into that fear? I'll never judge someone if they, they don't want to, right? It's not easy. It's not easy. I'll never judge someone for it. Just kind of got to accept it and know that you'll be 
It's still good again one day. It's That's what it is. Bro, it's said. literally blind, blind, blind faith, bro. Know that you'll feel good again someday. Everyone deserves to, everyone deserves to feel good at some point. Everyone deserves to meet somebody that makes them feel good. Um, I think you. I think we have to also accept that we may. Many of us may have a already met the person that is best for us, and we let it go in our lives. Yeah, I believe that. But that's it's very possible. We we met the person and we made a bad move. Huh. I think accepting the fact that you could have made a bad move is part of maturity, part of growth. Yeah. Um, you know, if I look back, do I think I made all the right decisions every time? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, yeah. you know, I didn't, but you have to live with it. Huh. You know, like you have to live with it. I think if you fester on it or what they for, but like, It'll go nuts. It'll go nuts. But can I, you know, are there certain situations where I'm like, I wish or maybe I could have saw how things played out more before making a decision? Maybe. You know? Hmm. So I've definitely done premature decisions, I I believe. Yeah. In order to protect myself, in order to protect them. <laughs> Huh. Whatever the case may be, but like we were saying, I'm like the decision could have the de- the decision you you're going to make that's very difficult. If you ask yourself, did that be made? Did it have to be made now, or could it still have the same effect if it was made two months later? Did it have to be made? Right now in the sand. Or if you still had the same decision to be made, but could have been persuaded by a different decision or, or persuaded by a different situation or just saw how things played out a little bit longer. Like life isn't going anywhere per se, but if I waited two more months or you waited two more months mm. or three mm. and still made that same decision anyway or not made it, but you knew you're going to make it regardless. Did it have to be made at that very second? Right? Yeah. Are like, you asking me specific to this one? Sure. I think, I, sure. Think, I think in my case, I had to make it at that particular moment. Okay. Based on like conversations and things that were happening. Okay. I was like, yeah, I had to make it in that moment. And so uh, nothing would have changed if you made that later. No, because of what the conversation was about. We needed an answer at that moment kind of thing. Yeah. It was kind of like, if I don't address this now, Mm -hmm. it like I, it could go a weird, it could go a weird place. If I don't address my thoughts on this now. I'm the same. I I know. I know. I know what you're saying. Cause it's like, if you didn't, address it at that moment it's kind of like <laughs> one you'll be thinking about it all the time my conscience wouldn't allow like, me to, you would yeah. be able to function so it's yeah. like it kind of it kind of forces you into a conversation that yep. whether you want to have it or not because it's like if you don't have that moment you're gonna be thinking okay when i'm gonna have it then hmm. right when am i gonna do it tomorrow when am i gonna do it the, the next day when i'm with you like you're, you're just constantly be thinking about when I'm going to have this conversation and two, it's like, if you don't have that convo, huh. I feel like you're no longer, <laughs> I feel like you, you'll constantly have this feeling of like, I'm holding something back. Yeah. you my, if I didn't say what I said in that moment, there's no way out. If I didn't say what I said, like what I was actually thinking, my conscience would not be at peace. <laughs> right. It really wouldn't. Like, so you did it for you, in essentially, essentially, in a way. I did it for me and I did it for this person. I mm-hmm. did it f- for them because I knew it was the right thing. I, I felt like it was the right thing for me to say based on yeah. the conversation, things she was saying to me. But then in my own head, the reason I was struggling with saying it is because 
one part of me did not want to have to say this knowing that I was actively putting a border between us. But then also my conscience was wrestling with it saying, no, you need to say this because if you don't, you're going to think about it. You're going to think about the fact that you wanted to say something and, didn't. and you didn't. And now you're just dis- dis- disingenuous person. Like yeah. it would just, it's just better to just be honest. That's all you can, that's all you can do. Mm-hmm. Like, and that's the thing. Sometimes being like being honest is not fun. It's not fun all no. the time. It's really not right. It really is. I, I heard fun. something recently that someone said, um, uh, honesty, honesty without kindness is brutality. Mm. And like, it, it's true. Like as long as you just know how to deliver honesty in a, like a humanistic, just a decent way. The average person can take it. The average person can take it. Right. If you're an asshole about it, then now you're a dick. Right. So I couldn't like, as long as you're just honest about your intentions, what it is that you're thinking it's much better than playing this weird game with yourself where you're like, I'm going to choose to lie about this so that I get this favorable outcome down the road, but you only got that outcome because you lied. Like, yeah. and you know that, and yeah. you know that you lied about it. So at the end of the day, I'm more at peace knowing, all right, well, I was honest about how I felt and that's, better than not saying anything and holding that for months years whatever <laughs> and then saying how i really feel later later and then this person is like why didn't you say it back then yeah. we've seen I, the story play out before 100 percent, 100 percent. and i think i think it's just much more much healthier if both people don't ignore the fact that we think things. Oh. Like, I think there's this, there's this constant charade of not giving in that people do during these interactions with, people, with the opposite sex mm. that they're like, I don't want to give in yeah. anything. I don't want to tell them what I'm thinking. I don't want to tell her what I'm thinking because then she might think this or if they might think like, you're not even giving me a chance to think how I think, would think yeah. based on however you're thinking. I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah. And if you, if you continue to, to not make or make decisions based on what you think I'm going to do or how I'm going to react or not react, it's like you keep, you, you keep stealing my choice. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you keep stealing my choice mm. and then you have now actually manipulated this, this relationship. Yeah. And now even, I don't even know that, but mm. you know, so every time a every time a girl or a guy goes never mind or like it's all good I want like tell people those thoughts mm. because your never mind is now going to change the trajectory of this dynamic and I don't, I need I don't even know how I you don't. you know how you no know I don't. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I th- if we stop pretending like we don't have fucking feelings and think things, mm. and maybe you don't like me a little bit today. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's normal. Like, I-, I think it's just, we have to really get used to just understanding people go through transitions of feelings. Yeah, absolutely. And it doesn't mean now I hate you. Like, mm. no, it's just like, Today I don't really feel like talking to you, and like I I shouldn't be I shouldn't take that personally. That's like hmm. why what did I do? No, you didn't do anything. Yeah, but you need to let me know these how you feel because otherwise I'm gonna trip because hmm. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah, <laughs> like you're not saying anything, hmm. and then or you're in the mood as a result of you not want to talk to me. Yeah, when really you could just say I don't want to talk to you, and I wouldn't have had to push anything. But you're feared to tell me that you really just don't want to talk right now has not put you in the mood, which you're now going to lie to me about. Yeah. <laughs> and then now I have to fucking it's foolish decide. man. I, I have the to, whole thing. I have to decipher fucks. that. I now have to decipher something that you could just told me very easily. Just, I don't really try talking today. That'd have been like, no problem. The whole and thing we, is and we move on. All of this is just black. <laughs> <laughs> just Literally. be honest people. Yeah. Just be honest. Um, 
yeah, we, we dove in again today. <laughs> we dove in quite a bit again today, but I think it was necessary. I think it was, it's, um, yeah. anyone out there listening, this, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm not even going to say maybe, I'm sure you're all going through some situation of some sort or have been either currently just finished or about to enter a <laughs> situation that, uh, similar to anything we're talking about right now. So um, hopefully this gives you some type of some form of clarity. I mean, not, we don't have the answers to everything. Um, we just kind of share our perspectives out loud wherever they align with you. Feel free to take what you please, but um, we're learning ourselves, man. Like this isn't fun stuff. Hmm. <laughs> Relationships are, are difficult. Um, take work takes patience and it takes a lot of decision making that you don't want to do yeah there's a lot of things i don't want to do you're preaching to the choir whether you have to yeah I'm preaching to the choir so um i'm definitely feeling a lot better um glad to be back um i definitely needed this to just talk so thank you Zumar, for doing that of course um yeah i think um See you next week. So next week, yeah. Peace. Peace. Hello? We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk. We need to talk.